Welcome back to Nurses Nook and Corner. Knowledge and skill can't be made easy, but through this channel, come, let's make it easy. Before going into today's topic, if you didn't subscribe the channel, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get your updated videos. Watch the video till end to gain thorough knowledge. Today in this video we are going to see about GCS that is Glasgow Coma Scale which is a clinical scale especially used in emergency and critical care department. Let's see about the gist of GCS, who invented GCS and why the name Glasgow. Since it was developed in the University of Glasgow, it was named as Glasgow Coma Scale and discovered by neurosurgery professor Graham Testale and Brain Jennett, first published in 1974. Let's see the purpose of GCS. It is a reliable and objective way of recording the level of consciousness. It also describes the depth and duration of impact consciousness of coma. Why it's important? Patient consciousness can be identified quickly and clearly whether there is any improvement or deterioration of patient condition. we have seen about GCS in general and now let's see about the components of GCS which is very important to analyze the consciousness of the patient. There are totally three components. The first one is eye opening, the second one is verbal response, the third one is motor response. So these are the three main components which are assessed in Glasgow Coma Scale. about the eye opening first component. The maximum score is 4 and the minimum score is 1. So what are the score given as spontaneous force, if the sound is 3, to pressure is 2, none is 1, non-testable is NT. Let's see in detail one by one. Let's see how will you assess the eye opening. So if the patient opened their eyes before stimulus, then it is called as spontaneous and you are going to give a score of 4. But if the patient eye opening is not spontaneous, if they open their eyes after we spoke or shout at request, then the score 3 is given. Yet the patient didn't respond to the sound, we are going to give pressure. So where we will give pressure, so at the fingertip and at the trapezius squeeze and at the supraorbital notch. So if you are going to give pressure at these three areas and after that the patient is going to respond, what score you will give? Exactly, if the patient opens their eye after pressure, okay. you are going to give a score of 2. So spontaneous is 4, 2 sound is 3, 2 pressure is 2. the patient doesn't eye open after any of these stimulus at any time then there is also no interfering factor then score 1 will be given. So what are the interfering factors which cannot be tested? So closed by the local factors such as well and eyes or any trauma then it is non-testable. So you cannot uh, test the eye opening for the patient. The second component is the verbal response. So the maximum score is 5, the minimum score is 1. 
oriented 5 confused 4 words 3 sound 2 none 1 non testable is empty so let's see in detail about how you will assess the verbal response so for verbal response what you will ask the patient so you will ask which you know to answer to such as what day is today and do you know where you are at the moment so the time place and person exactly what is you are going to ask so if the patient exactly is oriented and answers correctly to name place and date then you are going to do a score of 5 yeah. can you tell me where you are At Southampton General Hospital. Can you tell me what year it is? It's 2009. But to the verbal response of the patient is not oriented and is confused. Communication coherently is done. Then what you will do a score of four. but the patient is not also confused only gives inappropriate words or intelligible single words that you have to give a score of 3 so can you hear me yes ten can you tell me where you are get off leave me alone doesn't speak even a single word only incomprehensible sounds or any moans or groans are there means then you have to give a score of 2 so doesn't respond to any of the sounds or words or anything there is no any interfering factors then you have to give a score of 1 which is none then the last situation is non testable so factors interfering with communication such as endotracheal intubation means you are going to do a score nt last component is motor response so maximum score is 6 and the minimum score is 1 obese command sick localizing pain 5 normal flexion 4 G corticoid three that is abnormal flexion is three. Desiderate is two and none is one. Desiderate is nothing but abnormal extension. Let's see about the description of motor response. The so first one is obese command. We are asking him to raise the hands or uh, show their chest. They are obeying to the command. Then you are going to give a score of six. Ten. Raise your right arm. Next in motor response is the localizing pain. If a person does not obey verbal command, then you have to give a painful stimulus over any of the areas such as supraorbital notch, trapezius, or suprasternal notch. Then, if the person brings hand above the clavicle to the painful stimulus, then you can give a score of five. Next in the 
motor response is the normal flexion. If the person flexes the arm to withdraw the pain from the pressure areas such as sternal notch, fingertips or even we nod the head to relieve pain from supraorbital notch, then you can give a score of 4. That is, we can say decorticate motion. In response to either of the painful stimuli, there will be an abnormal flexion at the wrist and elbow with abduction of shoulder. Then you have to give a score of 3. The patient may have a decorticate posture to painful stimulus. It indicates any damage to cerebral hemispheres, internal capsule, or the thalamus. So, if any of these areas are affected, the patient may have decorticate posture to the painful stimulus in motor response. Next motor response is desiderator. Desiderate is the abnormal extension. In response to either of the painful stimuli, there will be an extension of the wrist or the patient may also sometimes exhibit straightening of arm or leg that can be visualized. Then you need to give a score of 2. Exhibit desiderate posture. It indicates damage to brainstem or sometimes lesion or compression in the midbrain or cerebellum. So, if any of the damage occurs in the brainstem, midbrain, or cerebellum, then you can see the features of desiderate posture in the patient. Then, the last motor response is the patient remains still without any movements in arms or legs without any interfering factors such as hemiplegia or hemiparesis then you can give a score of 1. GCS steps to calculate. First of all, you are going to check for the factors that are interfering to assess the GCS such as any trauma, injuries or patient is having any intubation. Then, second, you are going to observe for the responsiveness of the patient for eye opening, speech and movements. If not responsive, then give a stimuli to the patient, which is the third step. That may be either the verbal stimuli or painful stimuli, such as speak loud or shout whether the patient is responding. So, if the patient doesn't uh, or respond to the verbal stimuli, then give pain stimuli to fingertip, trapezius or supraorbital notch. Then, the final step is that you are going to rate the GCS according to the patient observed condition. So, these are the four steps that you are going to know how to calculate the GCS. Next is the limitations of GCS. To whom you can't assess the GCS. If the patient is having any uh, habits of drug use or if the patient is severely alcohol intoxicated or the patient having shock, low blood oxygen which can alter the patient's condition, you cannot assess the GCS. If you assess then it will give an inaccurate score on the GCS. So these are the limitations where you cannot assess the GCS properly. In emergency situation, how can you assess the full GCS? Hence, at that time, you can use this easy GCS, AVP, alert, verbal stimuli, painful stimuli, unresponsiveness. If patient responds and obeys command, then mark as A, alert. If the patient responds only when you shout loud by verbal stimuli, then mark as B, which represents verbal stimuli. No, the patient only responds to pain stimuli. Then you can mark as P, 
which represents the patient only responds to pain but the patient doesn't respond to any of the stimuli then mark as u unresponsive this avpu can be done if not only in emergency situation but if there are any interfering factors or limitation to assess the gcs you can use this easy gcs avpu that is alert verbal stimuli painful stimuli and end response how can we document the gcs e4 v5 and m6 so the maximum score is 15 and the minimum score is 3 So how can we interpret GCS 13 to 15 mild head injury, 9 to 12 moderate head injury, 3 to 8 severe head injury? If 3 to 8, you have to suggest coma with need for intubation. Thanks for watching till end. If you didn't subscribe the channel, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get the videos immediately. Thank you.